What does Dan Garrett plan to do next? Will his activities draw down upon his good friend, Dr. Franz, the wrath of the Purple Dragon? What will happen when the Blue Beetle faces the Purple Dragon? Meanwhile, in a room adjoining the auditorium of a little Chinese theater, deep within the confines of Chinatown, a group of hard-faced men are receiving instructions from their chief. I want you men to get this straight. There must be no slip-up. At 11.30 tonight, you have Commissioner Warren in this theater, or else. I don't care how you get him here, but get him. Sure, boys, we'll get him. You're bringing him in the back way. Put him in one of the boxes to the left of the stage. Is that clear? Yeah. You two men stay with him. Tell him if he makes a move to escape, he'll never see his daughter alive again. You got that straight? Yeah, we got that straight. Well, and you leave the rest of a purple dragon. In Dr. Fran's laboratory, Dan Garrett is donning the mask and blue chain armor of the Blue Beetle. Oh, uh, Danny, Commissioner Warren called just before you arrived. Oh, what did the commissioner have to say? Uh, he said the two most financially successful men last year were Roger Gillespie, the contractor, and a fellow by the name of Anthony Rondos. Gillespie seems to have made a fortune during the building boom last year, and Rondos apparently made a great success of the importing business. Mm. Rondos is our man, I'm sure of it. Where's he live, did Warren say? Yes, he recently bought the Ridley home. Mm. I know that place. Yes, Danny, I know. I remember you visited the house secretly one night while you were making an investigation of Banker Ridley's strange death on the operating table. That's the place. Well, that'll be the Be Blue Beetle's first call tonight. So long, Doc. some of the boys to a show. A Chinese masquerade. What? Why, <laughs> I'm going as the Purple Dragon. Yeah, ain't that something? Yeah. Yeah, well, goodbye. I got to get going. The Blue Beetle. Yes, Mr. Purple Dragon, alias Tony Rondus, extortionist and blackmailer, the Blue Beetle. Oh. You're wise to my racket, eh? Yes, and I'm going to end your racket tonight. That's what you think. But no one is going to end my racket tonight or any other night. I'll Don't not... bother to shoot. Your bullets can't pierce this chain armor I'm wearing. The blue beetle is... Oh, oh my throat. Good work, Wang Tao. Pull the silken cord tighter around the blue beetle's neck. And that's enough. He's gone under. Let him drop. Is the blue beetle dead? I don't know, but tie him up and throw him in the vault downstairs. Oh, here. Here's a hundred bucks. Buy yourself a new opium pipe. I'm going down to Chinatown. I'll deal with the blue beetle later. I demand to know where you're taking me. To see your daughter, Commissioner Warren. Where is she? Where have you hidden her? If you've harmed the head of her head, I'll Don't see you. Don't worry, Commissioner. She ain't dead yet. Her hair's a little short since the purple dragon cut it off. But that was necessary for the part she's playing tonight. Part? What part? She's playing a part in a Chinese play. What sort of a game is this? My daughter's not an actress. Let me out of here. Quiet, I... quiet, Commissioner. If you want to see your daughter again alive... All right. What is it you want? A purple dragon wants you to resign as commissioner of market. What? Never. I've sworn to protect the merchants of this city against extortion rackets, and I intend to do it. Better think it over, commissioner. This part your daughter's playing is awful dangerous. Come on, commissioner. This is the place. In you go. Maybe you'll change your mind when you see the play. Meanwhile, in his laboratory, Dr. Franz is working on some of his interesting experiments. 
Hmm. Mm hmm. Now, now let's see. Four CCs of number 17. At, uh, there's someone out front in the store. Uh, uh, Tommy, you all the same Dr. Flans? Yes, yes, I am Dr. Flans. Uh, what can I do for you? <laughs> Only, how do I look in this Chinese costume? What? Why, Danny, bless my soul. Well, well, well. You know, you know, for a minute, I, I thought Confucius himself had entered my shop. <laughs> and my disguise as though. Oh, it's excellent, Danny, excellent. Uh, but why is the Blue Beetle dressed as a Chinese coolie? Well, the Blue Beetle is attending a theater party in the old Chinese theater tonight as an uninvited guest. And I think that when the party is over, the Purple Dragon and his extortion racket will be a thing of the past. Anything I can do to help? Yes. I, uh... I saw among your collection of curios an ugly Chinese warrior's mask. I'd like to borrow it for the night. Well, certainly, Danny, certainly. I, I'll get it for you. It, it, it's in this chest right over here. I'm going to throw a scare into some real as well as fake Chinese tonight. Uh, yeah. Here it is. Hey, what an ugly mask. Here, let me put it on. There we are. Oh, how do I look? Oh, terrifying. <laughs> That's good. Well... The stage is set and the audience is waiting. Good night, Doc. The Blue Beetle is playing a new role tonight. In a dimly lit auditorium, a hushed group of Chinese merchants await the performance they have been ordered to attend. In a box at the left of the stage sits a man, apparently the only Occidental present. Beside him sit two grim-looking individuals in Chinese costume. A strange power seems to hold the audience hypnotized as the curtain begins to ascend and reveals a large altar in the center of the stage, surrounded by lighted candles. Upon the altar is stretched the bound figure of a white girl, shorn of her hair, and clad in a white silk kimono, embroidered with a large purple dragon. Before the altar stands a gigantic Chinese, his head covered with a golden helmet and his face hidden behind a cruel, hideous mask. His upraised hands clutch a two-edged sword. Back of him, a grouped a dozen tense, muscled Chinese, likewise masked. Suddenly... Mighty Tibetan goddess Angri, the white infidel has defied her will, so Tibetan goddess must be appeased. Human sacrifice must be made upon the altar. No, no, that's my daughter. Tibetan goddess, speak again. Her voice say, death to white maiden. No, no, I'll do anything. What is it you demand? Why, infidel, interfere with priests of Tibetan of goddess. He encouraged Chinese merchants to withhold tribute. I, please, purple dragon, demand you resign from high office. No, I won't resign. This is a racket. You and your gang are cut out of fingers. Um, three times of goddess has spoken. Her verdict is death to white maiden. Only her blood upon this altar will appease of goddess. The blue beetle. Yes, the blue beetle. Reincarnation of the oriental god of final judgment. Is the blue beetle in that crazy Chinese mask up there? Oh, he's a fake. The real blue beetle is in the vault of my home. Wang Chao put him there. Oh, goddess in fashion. He calls for sacrifice. Oh, of goddess, I give you your... Drop that sword or I'll blast you with my magic ray. The word of goddess is in ruling. He cannot be touched. Ruling gives of goddess for sacrifice. Get the movie loop. You ruin our racket. Oh, what's he? Thanks, him. One pound on all of you. Real Chinese, big Chinese. I can handle you all. This is for you, Muncie. There goes your masked triple dragon. And here you go. And 
here comes the police to pick up the pieces. Hey, come on, let's get out of here. The cops are... Oh, no, you don't. There'll be room for you in the wagon. Look out, Blue Beetle, that Chinese, the sword. That will take care of you. <laughs> These Chinese devils are soft. Thanks, Commissioner, for the warning. Hey, you merchants to the audience. Here's your chance to clean up your own racket. Go to it, China. Clean out the rats that have been infesting your business. No more will the purple dragon shake the sword of human sacrifice over your head. He has been unmasked by the Blue Beetle. The Blue Beetle's work is done. And so the Blue Beetle smashed another racket and regained for his fellow citizens the admiration and respect of a grateful people. Later that night, Patrolman Dan Garrett, no longer in the costume of the Blue Beetle, sits in Dr. Franz's laboratory discussing the case with Dr. Franz. Well, Danny, uh, what gave you your first clue? The package of hair the commissioner received. Mm -hmm. And to think that such things can be. Why didn't some of those Chinese merchants report this racket to the police? Fear of vengeance. You know, Doc, fear is the greatest enemy of mankind. Back of every hatred, every failure... Every broken human relationship. Ah, that's very true, Danny. Well, Doc, run along now. Got to get some sleep sometime. Ah, that's true. Patrolman Dan Garrett has to rest if the Blue Beetle wants to fly. <laughs> Good night, Doc. I'll drop in tomorrow and see how you're coming along with that new portable television set you're building. Dr. Franz is working on a portable television set. Will it be successful? How can the Blue Beetle use it to run down criminals? What will be the Blue Beetle's next case? These questions will be answered in the next episode of The Blue Beetle. Copyrighted Fox feature appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine on sale at your newsstand. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in. <laughs> <laughs>